On platform.sh, you can now deploy your Drupal projects complete with a set of predefined operations that will automatically check for and apply updates with Composer to a development environment and alert you when they are ready to review and merge into production using source operations and activity scripts. To begin, you can visit our templates organization on GitHub, platformsh-templates, and deploy our Drupal 9 template in minutes by clicking the Deploy on PlatformSH button in the repo's readme. The button will initialize a new project on the region you select using the repository and use its .platform.app.yaml file to run its build and deploy commands. The template will automatically set up your database credentials so that you can complete the installation and have a deployed Drupal 9 site in just a few minutes. Your new Drupal site is built on Platform SH using the PHP Package Manager Composer, and all of its dependencies are defined within its Composer JSON and Composer lock files in the project root, which are installed on Platform SH during the build process. Over time, the teams responsible for maintaining those packages will release new versions, sometimes for important security concerns that you'd like to update as close to the release as possible on your site. On platform.sh, you can define a custom command in your applications.platformapp.yaml file that you can use to commit changes to your dependencies that result from running Composer Update to a dedicated Update Dependencies environment. We call this command a source operation, since running the command will result in these committed changes being applied directly to the source code on your project. This environment is an exact copy of production complete with all of its data, so that you're able to apply your entire testing pipeline to it. Our Platform App YAML configuration file tells Platform SH how to build and deploy your Drupal site, as well as which version of PHP it will use and how it will communicate with Redis and MariaDB via its relationships. Once we have created the update dependencies environment, we can add the command to that file under the attribute source.operations and name it update. This will be the name that we will use to run it locally and soon through an automated cron job via the platform SH CLI. We can then define a command that runs a separate bash script or that is defined inline that installs our dependencies and detects those that are currently listed as outdated. Those outdated dependencies are written to a composer diff JSON file, which we will use later on to set up our notification system using activity scripts. We run Composer Update to update those outdated dependencies and stage those changes to Git. If our lock file is changed, we'll then commit them to the environment. Once we commit the new command and push to the update dependencies environment on Platform SH, we'll be able to run the command from our local terminal using the CLI. Our change is deployed, so we can now run the command platform source dash operation run update to trigger the source operation on the environment. We can see in our activity stream in the management console that after that update command is executed, we get a separate push commit, the same one we define in our operation, pushing those updated dependencies to the environment. Those changes have deployed successfully and are ready to be tested, reviewed, and merged into our production site. In reality, we don't want to have to run this update command manually each time ourselves, but for it to run automatically in the background for us, regularly checking for updates and alerting us when they're available. In that same platform app YAML, we can set up another cron job called update to do this. For the sake of this demo, we will set it up to run every 10 minutes, but it is more likely that you'll want it to run on the update dependencies environment once a day. In the command, we'll first check that when the cron is triggered, it does not execute unless it is on the update dependencies environment. We're ultimately going to leave this environment active, and it will be a unique environment dedicated to this update task and nothing else, so no other environment needs to or should run it. We'll use the CLI command platform environment sync to first sync code and data from the parent environment, master, before running our update source operation. This makes sure that any changes to production that occurred since the operation was last run is included in the environment. 
We can add a command in our build hook that installs the platformers.h CLI so that we can run these set of commands and commit and push those changes. In order for us to use the CLI within an application container, we will need to define an API token as an environment variable in our project. We can go to our account settings and name, create, and copy a new token. We can then paste that token into an environment variable called platformsh underscore CLI underscore token so that it will be visible to the app container and enable the update cron job to regularly run in the background automatically for us. Finally, we'd ideally like to not think about these updates until we need to. Namely, when updates have actually been found and the update dependencies environment is ready for us to review and merge. For this, we'll use activity scripts, a set of JavaScript programs that can be added to a project and customized to respond to specific activities. In this case, we'd like to be notified on Slack that the source operation activity has been executed since this will let us know that there are updates ready for review. To do this, we can first create a dedicated Drupal updates channel in our Slack workspace that we want these messages to be sent to. In Slack, we can access our admin settings and manage our apps, where we can then build a new app from the website. We'll create a new app, select our workspace, and then activate incoming webhooks, which our activity script will use, specific to that Drupal updates channel. This will give us a webhook URL that we can quickly test from the command line. We'll copy the webhook URL and once again create an environment variable, this time called slack underscore URL, so that our activity script can access it. You will see in the activity stream that our cron job we set up in the previous step is running in the background for us already. In our local repository, still on the update dependencies branch, we can add our activity script. The script itself isn't added to the project by merely committing it, but rather we will need to add it using the CLI, but keeping it in the same repo will keep all of our work together as we go. We'll create a file called slack.js and paste in our example from the public documentation. It contains a helper function for accessing our environment variables specific to our deployment activity object, another that uses that function to read our webhook URL and our fetch API to deliver our messages to Slack, and a function that parses the composer diff JSON file we're writing to in our source operation into that message. In the final lines, we'll use all of these to send our message to Slack. To add it to the project, we'll use the CLI command platform integration add, which is the same command we would use to set up an integration to an external Git service like GitHub. In this case, we'll define its type as script for our activity script and include the events that we want the script to be concerned with source operations on our environments. We confirm that we want the script to run when the activity has completed successfully, and then we'll see that it's been added. The script has an integration ID, which we can use to edit and update the script later on if we wish. Going forward in time a bit, we can see that our cron job has triggered our source operation, and once completed, we can see that our first delivered update message is ready for us in Slack telling us that updates were found and applied to the update dependencies environment on our project and that they're ready for our review. We can access the deployed changes in the management console, verify everything works as we'd expect, and then merge into production. Since we're leaving the update dependencies environment active on our project, we will continue to get these notifications whenever updates are found so that we can always keep our Drupal sites on platform.sh secure and up to date.